Hello everyone, today we'll be making a cinematic title inside DaVinci Resolve, so let's get started. First we need to open our project settings and make sure that our frame rate is 24 frames a second and playback rate 24. In case your playback rate is not 24 frames a second, you just need to click on the drop down and select 24. I set it to default when I was installing DaVinci Resolve, but in case you set a different default, you're going to have to select 24. So I'm just going to click cancel. Now we need to right click on our media pool and, and create new fusion composition. And we're going to make it five seconds long. And we're going to click on create. Now we're going to drag our fusion composition onto the timeline and we're going to select the composition. Now we're going to go over to our fusion tab. <coughs> Here we are in our fusion tab. So we're just going to take this media out node and we're going to drag it to the corner where it doesn't get in our way. And we're going to right click anywhere on the flow and we're going to click arrange tools to grid make sure that it's checked it might, mine is checked on, on default and options select orthogonal pipes instead of direct pipes and what i'm going to do now i'm going to go into the standalone version of fusion the, the tutorial will work in davinci resolve it's just the fusion tab in davinci resolve is a lot slower than using the standalone version of fusion so i'm just gonna open fusion and I'm going to close DaVinci Resolve. Here we are in our Fusion tab. Now the first thing we're going to do, we're going to do Control Space Bar. Control Space Bar. And we're going to type text. Select Text Plus and click on OK. In the Text Plus we are going to write Trailer. And we are going to view this text. Zoom out. It's very small and we're going to select the font as an X. and the link I'll provide in the description for the fonts used in this tutorial. So I'm just going to make the size bigger. This isn't the final size. We'll scale it to proportion later. It's just that when you create the bevel profile, it's better to have a larger text to create smoother bevels. It has more detail in it. So we're going to select another text plus two. And we're going to bring it down close to it. And we are going to type cinematic. Now let's just look at our second text plus tool in the other viewer. We zoom out. And for the font, we are going to select bank gothic. Here's the font. So we're going to just make it larger, like right to the edge of the frame. So to this, we are going to add a bevel and emboss. This is the same tool that we used in our last tutorial. As I explained, this tool does not come with Fusion. It's a tool that I designed. You can get it in the link in the description below. Make sure to use promo code cinematic and you'll get a discount. You'll get it for 825 instead of 1125. So as we can see, we have the bevel. So we're just going to change a few things. So what we're going to do, we are going to change the filter to linear. Just makes it a little bit smaller. And here we're going to bring down the specular a little bit. We're going to bring up the sharpness. And I forgot to mention that the sharpness works in the opposite direction. So the higher the value, the less sharp the text is. And we're also going to bring down the height, something like this. Now we're going to load our project files. And a big shout out to Wazi from Filmline Visual Effects. Thanks for the lens flare in the background. So we're just going to drag our project files onto our flow, just like that. We'll minimize this. And Fusion automatically created these merge nodes, even though we do not need them. So we're just going to do that. and we're going to Cut, select and cut. What we need right now is the reflection map. So we'll just move the second text out of the way. We'll connect this to the reflection map input of the bevel and emboss. And to this reflection map, we are going to add a transform node. You can just control spacebar and search for XF. That's the shortcut for transform. And in the transform, we're going to select mirror edges and we're going to bring the size down. Now we're going to go back into our bevel and emboss and we're going to bring the specular down. 
and we're gonna increase the height just a little bit just teeny tiny bit and now we're just gonna turn off our transparent background so we can see how how much contrast this actually has bring the height up a little bit more that's nice and we can also play with our reflection angle so i'm just gonna yeah it moves too fast so we're gonna just hold control and when you click on control it gives you more control over the setting so something like this that's nice and one other thing we have here <clears throat> we have a polar height and equator angle this changes the direction of the 3d lights so we can play with this a little bit but it's a little bit too dark so we can bring specular up really helps so we're just gonna oh also there are different reflection types and then for this i'm gonna probably select screen that makes it like that and we're gonna bring the yeah that's what we got now for the second text so we're just gonna oh make this what's it do like that and here's our second text we're gonna send this to the viewer to this viewer and we're going to add a separate bevel and emboss because the texts are different sizes. So their bevel properties are supposed to be different. We'll deal with them individually. So we'll just send this to the bevel and emboss and we'll send this to the viewer. As you can see, it's very sharp and we want a smooth bevel. So we're just going to go to our sharpness and bring it up. Made it smoother and we're going to bring our height down something like this and now we're going to use the same instance of the reflection map we'll just connect it to the reflection map input as you just need to hover over it and it says map input and this is the texture input we won't be using texture input even though you can create some interesting effects with the texture input so we are going to grab another transform and we when you click shift it just adds it into the pipe so we can select the edges mirror and we are going to bring the size down. What else? We go back into our bevel and emboss and we change the reflection type to spherical. Gives it for screen. Yeah, screen's better. We're gonna bring the specular down and we'll turn off our transparent background. In the Vintage Resolve, you would just right click, go to options and check it underlay, you could check it on. Here in Fusion, have this convenient button that turns it off and on. So what else we can do? We can play with the reflection angle. Let's click on control and see how to get it nicer. Something like this. Very nice. And so we can play with this polar angle, just control and bring it up a little bit, just like that. Okay, so our text is ready. What we're going to do now is just keep everything clean here. Here's our reflection map. Here's our text. I'll just bring it like that so we see what we're doing. Now we are going to merge these together. So you just pull the, one, the input of one onto the input of another, and Fusion automatically creates a merge. And as you can see, everything's going to be way too big now. So, uh, yeah, so we're going to add a transform node after both of our, both of our titles, both of the text. In this one, we're going to bring it up. We're going to make it a lot smaller. Yeah, there it is. This one, we are going to make, bring it a little down to keep everything centered. And we're going to make this also smaller. Yeah, that's about the size it's supposed to be. So in comparison to it, you can see that this is supposed to be also a lot smaller. So just bring it like that. Okay. Looking very nice. Maybe we can go here and bring the specular down just a little bit more. Give this nice cinematic look. So we have cinematic trailer. Very nice. Now, we're going to go to our first text. Go to the beginning of this animation, and we are going to go to transform. In the Vintage Resolve, under size, you have a little slider here called tracking, but in the standard version of Fusion, it's character spacing. So that's one thing that decided to change. So we're just going to bring this up. 
and we're going to bring this up and in the merge we're just gonna yeah so we're gonna go to the character space and bring it up very nice and we're gonna go to frame number 80 it doesn't have to be like Frame 80, and we're gonna. Oh, wait, did we set a keyframe? No, we didn't set a keyframe. So we're gonna right click and click on animate. Very nice. And in the Vinci Resolve, you have the diamond button here. You just click on it, it becomes red. That shows you that there's a GIF keyframe. Now we've got the frame number 80. And we bring the character spacing back to default. So here's our text. Okay. Now we're gonna go to our merge node. And we're gonna go to frame probably 50, I wanna say. And we're gonna bring the blend down. That's the opacity of the second text. We're gonna right click, click on animate, or you can click on the diamond button in the Vinci Resolve. We're gonna go to frame 70, and we're gonna bring the blend back up. Very nice. Now, to this, we are going to add a DVE, which is basically uh, basically take something that's two-dimensional and lets you move it in 3D space. It's basically like After Effects. You don't have like a real 3D environment. It just lets you move it like Z, Y, X. What we're going to focus on is the Z move. So we're going to move this to the beginning of the animation. And we're going to move this behind the camera. And we're going to click on Animate. And we're going to go to frame probably about 40. And we're going to set this back to default. Don't worry about the clipping here. We're going to fix this in the curves. So after the DVE, we have our background here. One thing we can do, we can turn off the transparent background and we can add a control space bar shadow. In the Vint Resolve, this node is called drop shadow. So here's our shadow. We're just going to zoom in so we can look at it Turn on high quality. And we are going to select the shadow. Here it is. And we're just going to move it slightly to the side like that. And we're going to bring up the softness. And as you can see, it looks like it's kind of hovering over. Even though it's on a dark background, you can still see it. It's like sort of hovering over. Maybe make this a little bit. Oh, no. So, yeah, we need to remove the. We're just going to bring it a little bit higher. That is very nice. Now, after this, we're going to take this and we're going to merge it over our background. Yeah. We're just going to do Control T to switch inputs. And we are going to bring this down in size. So we're just going to zoom in, make sure that our corners are exactly the same size. It doesn't have to be exactly, but still. So, <clears throat> make sure that we set our blend mode to screen. Very nice. And now we are going to take our lens flare. We'll also merge this here. And we're going to set the blend mode to screen. Now, when it comes to position, we'll probably want to add a transform after the shadow so we can move everything together. So, we're just going to bring this up because the flare is basically centered. So we want our text to be centered. We'll just bring it a little bit higher, a little bit. And now we are going to add color curves. So we're just going to type CCV, and that's the shortcut for color curves. OK, so we're going to look at our color curves. We're probably going to bring this a little down. We're just going to select our splines here and we're going to click Shift S. That makes it nice and smooth and not jagged like that. Now it's a lot easier. We're just going to do another color curve, CCV. And here we're going to deselect red, green, and alpha. So we're just with the blue here and we're just going to bring the blue up. Something like this. A little bit too much. Just a little bit too much. We're going to select these lines here, the points, and we're going to click Shift S. Very nice. 
Now we're going to get a background spacebar BG. That's the shortcut for background. And we're going to pull this here. To the background, we're going to apply a rectangle mask. So I'm just going to control spacebar rectangle. Okay. And that's one of the small inconveniences of orthogonal pipes is that it only does it applied this as a map. That's actually funny. Now we're going to look at the mask, send this to the viewer. We want to stretch the mask like this, just about that. And we are going to pull it like that. Now we're going to click on invert. And we're going to merge it over our scene. And since we were working in, yeah, a full HD and our background was 4K, that's what caused this little tiny problem. So here are our cinematic bars. Might look ready, <clears throat> but there's still one thing. We need to go into our spline window and select all the things that we need to ease in and ease out. So we're just going to select one and we're going to click zoom to fit. We're going to select all of our keyframes and click on Shift S. So we want the character spacing to be fast in the beginning and ease out. So we're just going to pull the spline like that, just like that. And we're going to make this handle just a little bit shorter. That now it's just going to draw, like fast go in and slow down towards the end. We're going to deselect the text and find the other things that we animated, like the merge blend. So we're just gonna select all of that, select the keyframes, click on Shift S, and that's about fine. It's gonna ease in and ease out, so it's not gonna be so linear. Now, the Z move, we also want it to be like an explosive move in, so we're just gonna select that, zoom to fit. <clears throat> and we're gonna select all of our keyframes like that, I'm gonna click on Shift S, and we want it to be an explosive move in. So we're just going to make this handle very, very short. And we're going to pull this handle all the way, and make it even further, as far mm -hmm. as it can go, basically. That's about it. And we're just going to click on Control S to save our project. Let's see. Yeah. And one more thing. To make it look even better, we're going to take our reflection map, pull it to the side, and after it, we are going to add a transform node. We're going to look at our reflection map in the viewer. This is the map. And we're going to select mirror edges. We're going to go to the beginning of this animation, frame zero, go to center, right click, click on animate. That's nice. And we're going to go to the end of our animation. And we are going to pull the center like this. Yeah, something like that. Now, this is our final text. And I would play it back for you guys, even though that it's not so easy to play it back inside of Fusion. But I'll probably add it at the end of the tutorial how it looks and in the beginning of the tutorial you saw how it looks so we're just going to go back to our spline and we have our transform center displacement so we're just going to fit the screen and we're going to select our keyframes and click shift s and it's going to ease in and ease out so after this you can add a saver node if you're working in the standalone version of fusion or if you're working inside the Vinci Resolve, you add you connect it to the media out node. Thanks a lot for watching this tutorial. If you like this tutorial, please share, like, subscribe to stay up to date to, the, to my latest tutorials. And if you have a tutorial request, then please, I'm all ears. I'd love to hear it. Thank you. See you next time.